Welcome to Dino's Tech Coach Corner YouTube series. I'm Tiara Lustig, your host, and today I'm joined once again by Rochelle Danae Poth, and we're talking about student choice. We're talking about why it's important, how she really promotes student choice in the classroom and in a remote setting. So it's a great conversation. Can't wait for you all to hear it. Before we jump in, as always, don't forget to subscribe to Dino's YouTube channel. We have a really awesome giveaway going on right now, so head over to that video on our YouTube channel, read the instructions, uh, subscribe to our channel, comment on the video, and we'll go ahead and get you um, entered in that giveaway where we will be announcing the winner next Friday, October 23rd. So go ahead and get entered in that, and don't forget to follow us on all of our social media as well. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. Go ahead and give us a follow so you don't miss anything that we're putting out. I think that's all I have to plug today, so let's jump into our conversation with Rochelle. Welcome back to Tech Coach Corner, everyone. I'm Tiara Lustig, your host, and today I'm joined by Rochelle Danae Poth. Uh, Rochelle, would you mind giving a brief introduction to yourself before we jump in? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me today. Uh, so I am a Spanish and a STEAM teacher. I've also taught French many years ago and uh, just have been teaching for a while. I also stay pretty busy as a consultant and also an author. And uh, I always just say I love learning <laughs> and talking about learning. So I'm excited to be here with you. Well, good. That's exactly what we do here on the Tech Coach Corner is talk about learning and, and learn from each other. So I think today we want to dive into the topic of student choice. Um, during this time of remote learning with student autonomy increasing, choice has really increased as well. Um, so I'd love to get your opinion kind of on why student choice is important, especially during remote learning and how maybe to promote student choice both in the classroom and during kind of this remote learning setting. Yeah, you know, it's funny for a long time when I first started to use more technology in my classroom, I was having students do projects and they would ask me so often, well, can I do this instead? Or can I put on glitter or whatever it was? And so often I would say no, because I just, I wanted it done the way that I wanted it to be done. And once I started to find some different digital tools, and it's not about the technology, it's about being open to their ideas. But there were times where students would bring in these projects that didn't fit into the mold that I had designed for them. And so I started to think about like, what, why do I need to give them more opportunities to like do something different? Because I was really using the methods that had been done for me when I was in school. And in my mind as a teacher, I thought, oh, it worked for me, it's gonna work for them but I was finding that it wasn't working the same way for them as it did for me. And so I took, took some risks uh, initially and just started to give them a list of different choices. And it was so interesting because one, I got to learn about the students, uh, the ones who they didn't want to use technology, they just like to draw and they were very artistic. And so then it led us to different conversations. Two, I got to learn about a lot of different technologies. I knew enough when I gave them the list, but just that, that point of being able to learn from them as well, as much as I'm teaching them, it just made a huge difference. And seeing the time that they would invest in something that they were more interested in when they were creating with it, it just, the amount that they retained the language and the content went far beyond just, okay, the project's done, let's move on. I mean, for some of them, like just as an example, one of the options was to do something with augmented reality and the students, even a year later, were talking about how much they remember because they were thinking so carefully about what to put into it and what to put with the language and just giving them those choices, clearly more meaningful for them. And I mean, they're more engaged and the motivation goes up. So I just wish I would have started doing it sooner. <laughs> Definitely. And I think one thing I've heard a lot during this time of remote learning is those passion projects for students, giving them things that they're really going to be engaged with since they can't be as engaged in the physical classroom as they would be, um, you know, if, if COVID wasn't going on. Do you have any favorite um, kind of strategies or tactics to promote student choice? Any um, like exercises, things like that? Yeah, there's a good, a good number of them because like I said, I was <laughs> I went through this whole period of time where I noticed a huge decrease in student engagement and I just couldn't figure out how to fix it. The biggest problem was I didn't understand it. So once I did that and started to try some new methods, so even while schools were closed, doing things like project-based learning and genius hour and just being open to whatever the students wanted to explore, uh, whatever they wanted to create or how they wanted to share that with us as a class made a huge difference. So it's not a lot of work as far as the teacher and the time that's involved. It's just, 
uncomfortable at first because we're so used to making the decisions and giving the students that independence and freedom to decide what they want to study and how they want to show like what they're learning. But it, it made a big impact on all of the students because they were able to become the leader. And instead of just taking in what I'm creating, they're the ones creating. And so those, those are easier to get started with because you just give them that choice and see where they go with it. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And giving them kind of the autonomy to lead their own projects. Um, right. It's really where I think education is going. Um, well, thank you so much for kind of outlining student choice, sharing your experience with it. Um, would you like to share where people can engage with you further or anything you're currently working on that you might want to promote? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm pretty consistent. So Twitter, Instagram, my blog, my podcast email, it's all rdene915. And uh, just, I, I'm working on a couple of other books and some blogs and things, just like sharing what I'm doing, what my students are doing in the classroom to hopefully make it easier for other educators to kind of get started with some of these ideas. So yeah, would love to connect. Awesome. Well, we will share that out so everyone can engage with you. And I encourage everyone to engage with you because I know you have some great information and books out there. Um, well, thank you so much, Rochelle, for being with us today. Thank you.